Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we are going to be taking a look at how we can do a detailed multiple regression analysis project from start to end using Microsoft Excel. I had made a previous video on multiple regression and it had got a lot of views and likes. So I thought of taking the time to make another detailed video for a complete end to end multiple regression analysis project in Microsoft Excel. I am going to be using a data set that I have obtained from Kaggle. I will leave a link in the description so you can download the data set and follow along with me. We will be executing it step by step in a very simplified manner so that you can follow along. Even though in today in machine learning world we use a different sort of algorithms for different kind of use cases, a multiple linear regression is still one of the key algorithms because of its high interpretab interpretability. Because you can not only make predictions using the multiple linear regression model, but you can also understand your data and understand and form hypotheses about your data. So let's dive right into it. But before we dive right into it, do not forget to subscribe to my channel for the latest of data analytics across different technologies. So this is the data set as we see it here. It has different columns. The R study, the previous scores, the extracurricular activities, sleep hours, sample questions practice, and finally is the performance index. Now what we want to do is we want to try to build a model to predict what is the performance index so that if we have given the new data on the R study, previous scores, extracurricular activities and so on, we should be able to predict with high accuracy what is the performance index can be expected of a student. So let us first analyze this data. Okay, So I am going to be take a, selecting this and let us see the distribution of the performance index. So I am going to go to insert. Let's click on the my favorite box and whisker plot and you get this here. Okay, so let's just do some modifications. I like to remove the grid lines. I like to click on the data labels. Okay, let's also click here and open the double click and open the the menu and you just convert this to number. Okay, and now you get a clean view on the distribution of the data. So we can see the distribution here, the middle 50% in the quartile, that is quartile 2 and quartile 3 exist between 40 and 71. So the middle 50% of your data lies between 40 and 71. You can see the dispersion is quite narrow. It's quite narrow. So this is a fairly normal, normalized data. The dispersion is quite narrow and the highest and lowest values are 10 and 100 respectively. So now let us try to see how this dispersion of the data or the distribution of the data varies across the different uh, into category like let's take extracurricular activities and see if there's a difference if the student has taken an extracurricular activity or no so how to do this let's click on the chart let's click on select data i click on edit here okay now i'll go and to the extracurricular activity column select all hit on ok and click on ok and now if i go you can see across the two categories that is the people who have taken the extracurricular activity and the students who have not taken the distribution is fairly similar and you can still see the middle 50 percent of your data lies between 41 to 71 with a fairly narrow dispersion so if i were to randomly predict what would the next student get i could say it would lie somewhere in this value between 40 to 70 right so now so the the, the data looks quite good let us try and see the distribution of extracurricular activities of a categorical variable so i'm going to insert a pivot table let me do it here in the corner so click insert pivot table. I'm going to type the entire table. I'm going to say in the existing worksheet and let's put it somewhere here. Okay, let's click on okay. Okay, now in the pivot table, let me take extracurricular activities as rows and the count in the columns. Let us add a chart to get some more clarity. Let's add a bar chart. All right. And just let us change this placer under here so you can see all your analysis together. Again, open the menu and just change this from zero so that you want to see the range. Okay, and now we can see yes and no, the category yes and no are fairly equally divided so that there are equal number of students who have taken extracurricular activity and that uh, as compared to those who have not taken extracurricular activities. Okay, so we have seen to now let us do another important analysis. Let us find out the relationship between the variables. There's an important concept called multicollinearity. So we should try to find out is there any correlation between the variables that we are using to predict. If there is, then maybe the model will not be as reliable. So then there are certain steps we need, we need to take to improve the model. So first let me cut this. I'll remove the categorical variable and paste it at the corner. 
okay and i have all the numerical variables together okay so let us go to data let us go to data analysis okay okay so now okay let us select on correlation click on okay now so let me select the all the numerical variables our study previous course okay and let's click on labels in the first row because we have labels in the first row and where do we want to place it let us place it here only in the same sheet so we can analyze it click on okay and these are the correlation between the different variables so you can see there's a weak correlation between each of the variables okay between previous score and our study sleep hours and previous score so this in independent variables are loosely correlated with each other if they are very highly correlated then we need to take certain actions because if you put in variables that are highly correlated with each other for making the prediction then your predictions of the model may not be as reliable and the model may not be able to generalize very well so this is okay for this we don't need to do any any actions now let us see if we can do further anything to improve the data let us try and remove all the duplicate values so that we are left only with the unique values so i'm going to select all this data and let us go to data and let us click on okay, let me select all this okay and let us click on remove duplicate so for all the columns i have selected hit okay and it should be there are 127 duplicate values so i want to remove all the duplicate values and use only the unique data so i click on okay and now my data set is prepared so let us go and try to create our first model okay so let us for creating the first model let us consider the numerical variables only and let us take some features and then see how we we do in the initial model okay so let's see how we can do this i'm going to click on data analysis and go to click on regression and let me select the y variable so the y variable is the variable that we want to predict in this case it is the performance index because we want to predict the performance index so i'll select this and the x variables are the variables you are going to use to predict the performance index so in this case let us take these three numerical variables previous course sleep hours and sample questions and click select on that make sure this labels check box is checked because we have labels in the first row okay and we place it in this in this worksheet so click on okay and here we are we have with our first model so let us take a look at one by one each parameter and try to understand so multiple r shows that there is a linear relationship between the independent variables and the variable that we are trying to predict so very good and the adjusted r square which is very crucial value in determining how good your model is so this is a very good fit of the data that means the x variables or the variable that we are used to predict can predict around 84% of the variability in the y variable so the independent variables the variable that you are using to predict can predict around 84% in the variability in the performance index which is a very very good number okay and also let us take a look at the p values so p values tell us if these variables are of statistical significance or not in predicting the output variable or, the, or if they are of statistical statistical significance with respect to the output variable so generally for every vari variable or feature we have the null hypothesis stating that the <coughs> coefficient is of no statistical significance and if if the p value is less than 0.05 we can disregard or we can reject the null hypothesis that means the the coefficients are of statistical significance so in this case we can see the p values for all these coefficients are less than 0.05 so all these variables are of statistical significance now how do we interpret this so so the let us take one variable like previous course what does this mean this means that for every increase unit increase in a previous score the performance index will increase by 1.01 if all the other variables are kept at the same level so that means if for uh, for every unit increase in a previous score the uh, the person performance index will improve by 1.01 so that is how you interpret the model as i mentioned linear regression model gives you a great sense of in interpretability on how you can interpret your data and interpret the model in making predictions now let us see if we can further improve this model and further improve its accuracy okay so let us do that okay so now before that we also have a categorical variable and while doing multiple regression we need values in numerical format so i'm going to convert this categorical variable into numerical format so let's select insert i'll say extra 
curricular yes okay and now i'll i'll add a formula equal to if this is equal to yes and one else zero okay so now i have converted my categorical variable into into numerical variable and now let me do a regression analysis again and we we'll select two more features which are the two more features we we'll select that is the r studied and the extracurricular yes so let us go again to the data tab click on the data analysis click on regression click on okay now select the uh, the y variable again that is the variable we want to predict and now this time for the independent variables the variables which we want to use we are going to use numerical and categorical variables so let us add two more features to this list and select all okay and where we are going to place it let's place it below so we can directly compare the the models click on okay and now it has generated for you you can see nice reputation and wow take a look at this number now the adjusted r score is 0.98 this is extremely high you know value that means around 98% of the variability in the performance index can be explained by your features i mean it will it will give you a highly accurate result and it shows there a strong linear relationship between the independent variables and the variable that you are trying to predict now let's take a look at the p values here again all of them seem to be below 0.05 that means all are of statistical significance and let's take a look at the most important variable so if you can see your wow let's take a look at these two variables this one and this one so we have seen earlier that for the previous scores if for every unit increase in the previous score the performance index increases by 1.01 but let's take a look at this for every unit increase so for an every extra hour studied by the student his performance index will increase by 2.85 wow that looks like a great and again this is if you keep all the other levels at the uh, all the other variables at the same level so again so for for every every extra hour studied keeping all the other variables at the same level the performance index of the student will increase by 2.85 and let's take a look at at, at one more statistic that is with around 95% accuracy we are able to predict that the range will be between 2.83 and 2 to 2.86 so definitely we can see that the hour study plays an impact in increasing a performance index of a student as well as previous scores so these are very two important variables and using this now you can make predictions or which will give you what will be the performance index of the student given the input uh, you know values of this extracurricular activities hour study previous scores and and sleep hours and sample questions and now prepare the model i'll just uh, you know in the right the model so let's take a look at it okay so we are back i had just pause the videos while i while i write this equation so that to save you the uh, the time to see me type it out so this is the equation now you can use this equation to make predictions for your future prediction that you want to make so if you have data on the if a, if a new student has taken an extra curricular activity or the number of hours studied and the previous course sleep hours and sample questions if you have this data for for new students you can make predictions using this model to tell what will be the expected or what will be the predicted performance index for that particular student with those parameters so now that this can be used as you can see this model has been generated here you can use all these coefficients and you can use them to to create this model you can you can create a formula out of it and make predictions on your future data i hope you like this video and you understood how we can use multiple regression again i have not covered every single concept of multiple regression because it's a topic of you know great detail and people have also done phd's on this topic but if you want to me to go this uh, to go into a more detail on this do leave a comment on my video and i'll cover more topics like how to co consider different categorical variables or categorical variables with more than one values and how to do also a data analysis on your data do leave a comment and a like on my video and do not forget to subscribe to my channel thank you